Cowabunga, it's pizza time. What's up everyone, it's me, Go Carlo, and we're doing a review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. So this was a really awesome movie, and we got all my figures here, right? I'm gonna give you a spoiler-free review, and then we're gonna get into the spoilers. Before we get into any spoilers or anything, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was originally a comic book, and then it became a cartoon, and it became toys, and then they kept rebooting it. It became really popular. Uh, I was a fan of the 80s series, um, and then uh, the 2003 series uh, is the one I grew up with. I'm pretty familiar with the different versions of some of the stories and the characters. Uh, I was a big fan of the original movie uh, from the 90s, the live action one. All right, so without any spoilers, do I recommend the movie? Yes. Would I give it a high rating? Yes, actually. Um, here's what I have to say about it. Okay, what I enjoyed about it Last time you guys saw me review a movie, it was for Spider-Man Spider-Verse. And this movie actually keeps like the same style. Like this movie is anything after Spider-Man Spider-Verse has to be on that level. And this is definitely on that level. This is a comic book come to life. Um, what I've heard from other comic book artists is that they've said that they left a lot of imperfections in the movie on purpose, which I definitely could tell that from the art style. Like, they made it really like a sketchbook. Uh, you see a lot of the lines. It, it's, it's a really cool art style. It's really animated good. And I recommend it, guys. The story is really good. The celebrities in this movie like Jackie Chan is Splinter and it really tells a good story. I'd, I'd rate it really highly and you know from the art style, the story, um, you know it's, it's really well made and it's a funny movie too. I don't know how to talk about this movie without spoilers man so we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into it. All right. This is how we're gonna do it. This is how we're gonna do it, guys. So, all right, so the beginning starts off with a flashback. So it starts off with Baxter Stockman. In the original cartoon, he, he was a fly. He turned himself into a fly, a scientist who turned himself into a fly. And in this one, he has a pet fly who is super fly later on. So, a lot happened in this flashback sequence. This is actually how the Ninja Turtles were created and a lot of the other mutants all mutated on this, you know, faithful day. And in this scene, you know, unfortunately Baxter Stockman dies, Superfly gets away, and the canister of ooze does fall into the sewer. So that was really playful how they, how they kept you suspense, you know, wondering what's gonna happen to that ooze that goes right into the sewer. So then we go 15 years into the future and it jumps right to the Ninja Turtles. Um, you see New York, everything looks great. Great opening sequence, great introduction to the turtles. Uh, one thing to point out here is they don't have their pupils, a callback to the comics and certain series and games and stuff where they don't have the pupils. So that was really cool. Um, New York City looks great. That's something really important to the Ninja Turtles is getting that city down. Um, Really funny introduction. All right, the Ninja Turtles themselves, let's talk about them. Raphael has a bandana um, that covers his whole head, kind of a callback to the live action movies from a couple years ago. Um, Donatello is wearing glasses and he also wears headphones. Um, 
Leonardo looks uh, the same as always. All the Ninja Turtles have different uh, shades of green, kind of like the toys. And um, their belts, their belts all have their um, letters on the belts, kind of like these toys here do. Um, not all series did that, but they did it there. And um, the opening scene, the opening scene is really funny. They're looking for Gogurt, but I think the best line is uh, Drake. Drake is the goat of all time. I thought that was great. Um, they talk about why they can't be seen by humans. Um, what do they say exactly? Humans are demons. Interact equals die. Um, another thing about the Ninja Turtles is their voices. So Donatello has a really young sounding voice um, but besides that the rest of them sound good they all sound kind of modern they all don't sound exactly how they used to but that's okay because they need to uh, make it fresh I was saying it before but another thing about the art style is that the characters are also um, not always drawn symmetrical it's something about um, art is that you know, sometimes it's actually not, you know, picture perfect, anatomically correct. They actually do do a lot of exaggerated proportions and stuff like that. So that is really cool, actually. So, all right, the movie starts off and they sneak away and they catch a movie. They go see Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Classic movie. I must have seen it a million times, you know in school when the teacher wants to throw a movie on. Um, so something different in this story that hasn't really been touched on in any other Ninja Turtle story, um, or at least not like this. The Ninja Turtles, you know, they would go disguise themselves like, uh, and, and go hang out in the human world. But in this movie, they're younger, and you know, they watch a lot of movies like Ferris Bueller, where they're skipping class, you know, they're in high school and stuff. And they just want to be a normal teenager. You know, they touch on it again later that what would they do if they weren't Ninja Turtles? They would just be normal. So this actually makes you feel for them that, you know, they have different circumstances from everyone else. All right. So the next scene, they go back to the sewer and Here's where we see an awesome, awesome character from this movie, Splinter. Master Splinter himself. And Master Splinter is played by Jackie Chan, guys. So he steals the show. He has so many good lines. And to me, Master Splinter is already such a lovable uh, character. So... That, that's the one thing about this review guys is I cannot do this movie justice because of how funny this movie is So me reviewing the movie talking about it is actually um, You have to see it for yourself. It's so much more funnier. Enjoy this movie But even if you check this out first, you'll remember what I was talking about when it happens. It's a big uh, ongoing joke about don't go to the human world uh, They're gonna milk you for your blood uh, there's a lot of like innuendos and funny jokes that kids aren't gonna fully understand and that's cool because that's what cartoons used to always be about there's a lot of humor in this movie but um, the next the next thing that happens is Splinter tells the the audience and the Ninja Turtles about their backstory that they have already heard it before a million times, but they got to hear it again. This is uh, one of the differences between other Ninja Turtle stories. We're not even going to get into it. Let's just say that in this version, Splinter was a rat and he found the turtles and he raised the turtles. One time he went to New York, Times Square, and... The people freaked out that they saw a rat man and the, and the baby turtles. So he never went back to the surface. But something that's different here is that when he explains how they know 
to be ninjas, it's because he watched a lot of movies. Maybe this is gonna be retconned or redone in the second movie to be discovered that maybe that wasn't the complete backstory of Splinter because um, I do like the backstory in, um, in the source material or in the other adaptations. We also, this movie also has a good soundtrack, like the scene with Splinter uses this song by De La So called I Know, and it's so good. Another thing is the movies that Splinter uh, watched in that montage. They did show, they did show a Jackie Chan uh, movie, and for a second, the rest of the movies, from what I recall, I think there's some of the movies that the Wu-Tang Clan uh, songs are named after. Like the Flying Guillotine and the 36 Chambers. Another ongoing joke is Splinter says there's not a lot of mutant ladies out there. Trust me, I've checked. So next, a scene that I really liked is all the Ninja Turtles on their phones. They're just on their phones and they say it again. What would you do if you're normal? We would just be normal. But it's never going to happen. Then it cuts to a heist in progress. It cuts to a heist in progress. And all of a sudden, a fly picks up the car. I thought that was really cool. It brings them to... Uh, an unknown location, the docks or something, and that's where we're introduced to Superfly and the mutants vaguely. We'll see them again later. After that, there's a quick scene where it cuts to the lab and they make the connection that this is the same fly from the beginning. Then it cuts to the Ninja Turtles on the roof in New York doing dangerous stunts, recording it on their phones, Awesome scene, gets kind of dangerous. Eventually, they throw a ninja star and it hits April O'Neil, and that's when we meet April. Um, while they're arguing back and forth, somebody robs her scooter. The Ninja Turtles have to save the day. They get into a big fight. Another thing that happens here is I guess Leonardo uh, starts having a crush on April. Again, I don't think has really been explored in Ninja Turtles, um, but being a Ninja Turtles fans, they cover so many theories and questions um, us fans have always had. So they start a huge fight. During the fight, there's like a go ninja, go ninja, go. There's a reference to Vanilla Ice. Um, at some point, there's a guy with a shotgun. Raphael spits on the guy. I laugh every time. After the fight, Ninja Turtles and April finally meet. April's cool, and then um, they're down to get pizza. So they explain more about who they are. Also, during this scene, because I watched the movie twice, I noticed that the rooftop they're on is called the Laird, after Peter Laird. That's one of the Ninja Turtles authors and creators. There'll be another reference to the other creator later on. The scene with April where it's the four Ninja Turtles and one April is really funny because it's just like all four of them are trying to get her attention and talk to her. It's so funny. Just like a bunch of guys trying to talk to one girl um, who's hanging out. The Ninja Turtles ask, will humans accept us? And April says no. They, they come up with a plan that maybe they're going to team up. They During the movie, there's a whole crayon cutaway scene that is really well done, all animated in crayon. And it's also a callback to the old Ninja Turtles or how we all drew Ninja Turtles as a kid. It was really awesome. All right, so they go back to the sewers. And a really funny scene is Michelangelo starts talking about Mark Ruffalo and how in Endgame, he improvised. And actually, I started to understand more about that scene in Endgame once Michelangelo explained it. But that was just a funny scene. Like, the way that Michelangelo talked there is how kids talk nowadays. Like, how he just started talking about random stuff. So, 
That was a Marvel reference in this movie. And honestly, when the movie started, they had a Batman reference. Michelangelo said, okay, Batman, something like that, talking to Leonardo. So they already had a Marvel reference and a DC reference in this movie. Oh, and they had a SpongeBob reference because during the flashback in Times Square with Splinter, there was a SpongeBob mascot or a knockoff SpongeBob. The improv the the reason why I was talking about Mark Ruffalo improvising too will come come back later on. So the Ninja Turtles called back April and they said let's let's uh, save prom. And this is another funny scene because April asked him a lot of questions that all the fans have been wondering. She says, "Do you have ears?" So we have way more questions. So then. They go to Eastman High, so that's named after one of the creators of the Ninja Turtles, Kevin Eastman. Go there, right away Donatello is like, no way, who's ever locker this is, they like Attack on Titan. So that was crazy, alright, we already had Marvel, DC, now we have anime references in the movie. Dude, they started, they, they started going and playing with all these answers, like, so they're asking us, right, Michelangelo says, do we have a last name? So he splits up his name, Michael Angelo. Like, I think that was in the trailer, but it, that was good. All right, so then they get into another montage where they're fighting a bunch of gangsters, right? To no diggity. And it's four, it's four different gangsters that they have to hunt down. And each one of those fights takes place in a different location. And... Each one of the turtles gets to have their time to shine. You really get to see all the turtles fight. And I think for a second, you even get to see a callback to the no pupils. So after that scene's over, might be my favorite scene in the whole movie. Yo, let me get a bacon, egg, and cheese. I'm a gangster. Look at me. I got my puffer and my Tims. We outside. We outside. Yo, that was so funny. That was so funny. Like, a lot of people might not appreciate it, but that was a good scene. I think it was a callback to the other live action movie or the last live action movies where there was the beatboxing scene at the end. So after that, they go back to the sewer and Splinter is trying to give them the world at home. And it's really heartwarming and you know really relatable but ninja turtles to uh continue their adventure they got the van and they're about to deliver it to superfly michelangelo reveals he's a fan of forza horizon this is a really good scene and someone we haven't talked about at all yet is ice cube he steals the show as Superfly and this is the scene where they play Bruno Mars Superfly yo it was so good man it was so good ten, five stars ten stars to Ice Cube in this movie man just that we get to see all the mutants like Leatherface and there's too many to name I, but I think I have them written down Bebop and Rocksteady of course Ice Cube calls them little tortoises something that we find out here is all of the mutants are connected because of that faithful day in the beginning um ice cube calls them yo we're cousins i thought i thought a really funny scene was ray filet uh something i will say is it was really cool to see a lot of the toys from the 80s become um in this movie and they were they were pretty recognizable i will say then there's Mondo Gecko. Mondo Gecko, I like your vibe. I like your vibe. They go to a bowling alley, the vibe is friendly, but then Superfly turns bad and the Ninja Turtles are hearing out the idea. It's a, it's an evil plan. And the Ninja Turtles say, hey, hypothetically, what if we're not with the plan? And Ice Cube, oh my God, it's so funny guys. Definitely, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. He goes, I'm about, I was about to go 100 on y'all. And then from there, the Ninja Turtle goes, hey, uh, you know, we could drive this van, but 
they they're not driving the van but they're in the van so they're able to steal the van and a car chase happens after after this whole car chase happens you know they fight the bad guys but eventually i don't know what to call them the fbi they they catch the turtles and they lock the turtles up and how, how are they gonna get out of this one while they're uh while they're you know in captivity by the fbi they actually get electrocuted and it's kind of like a callback to the ninja turtle games like uh turtles in time when they get electrocuted and you see their uh bones so april finds splinter because earlier on in the movie uh, they took April to the lair, but they didn't uh, bring her in. And um, after, after April finds Splinter, Splinter finds the turtles in the FBI base. And he breaks them out. And this is a really cool scene because this is pretty much a Jackie Chan fight scene animated. He's fighting with the chair. Um, not just that, with the Jackie Chan references. He even fights with all four of the Ninja Turtles weapons you see all of them get used and he saves a day and he the ninja turtles did get milked like splinter told them what happened but they all said no that'll never happen after the fbi base they jump right to they go to the mutants and it's pretty funny because all the mutants were evil until they convince them they don't have to be evil and they didn't really fight that hard they were like yeah you're right so everyone except for superfly was convinced and they fought they fight superfly until superfly falls into the ooze kind of a callback to ninja turtles 2 with the super shredder or if you watch enough anime or power rangers you know we're going kaiju we're going giant monster mode so he becomes super duper fly he comes out of the ocean later on he goes he thought this was godzilla nah so super duper fly is combining with a bunch of animals out of central park zoo the turtles and everyone they don't know what to do until they call april april has an idea they get this gun they shoot they shoot super fly and it only takes one animal off so they're in the middle of the big fight. This is pretty much the final battle. And the Ninja Turtles see a news report that paints them as the bad guys. They're trying to come up with an idea. They remember Attack on Titan. And that has to be this thing's weakness. A callback to Attack on Titan from before. Earlier on in the movie when they talked about it. They also have another uh, callback to Improv and Mark Ruffalo. So they find the party van, April finds Channel 6 News and paints the Ninja Turtles and lets everybody know that the Ninja Turtles are good guys and they're, they're kicking butt, you know, they're kicking ass with the party van until, until things aren't looking so good. They get beat up, Splinter gets beat up and what, what is going to save the day? The humans, the humans help out the Ninja Turtles, which Splinter thought that they never accept them. Splinter, Splinter got help that day. Also during this fight, I guess Splinter meets the bug and says he's very attractive. I'm talking about this thing. Splinter says she's very attractive. Eventually, the turtles saved the day, right? The turtles, they did it. Splinter gets the girl and the mutants the mutants come and live in the sewers with Splinter and the turtles then at the end of the movie they Take off their masks and they go to high school and they're accepted, you know, they're asked a lot of questions, but They're they're loving it. Um, and that's the movie until there's an end credit scene uh, you know, I'm not gonna spoil too much about it, but it was more callbacks uh, It was very funny, but then they do tease They do tease more for next time. All right, we're gonna talk about it shredder They had to they had they couldn't not do like a cool end scene with shredder 
And um, what are my last points here? They save prom. Uh, you see Superfly as just a fly. And, and that was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Um, John Cena. John Cena was rock steady. But honestly, I didn't didn't wasn't able to recognize him too much as Rocksteady. I did recognize uh, Seth Rogen as um, Bebop. Um, Giancarlo Esposito, of course, as Baxter Stockman. Did a great job. But um, that's all for this time, guys. Let me know if you enjoyed this movie. It's going to be a lot for me to edit. Uh, out of 10, I want to give it... Um, I want to give it nine stars, but maybe I'll give it eight. Um, I did feel like it was maybe a kitty, more of a kitty movie. I shouldn't even call it a kitty movie. I thought it was more lighthearted. I thought it was definitely geared more towards a younger audience, but they did have a lot of innuendos and jokes and it was mature. I didn't think I would like, like it as much a second time. But it did uh, stand the test of time, watching it a second time. Um, it is an instant classic, honestly. It is an instant classic. More classic than maybe a lot of the other movies, you know. I've always wanted to like, you know, some of the Ninja Turtle movies, like the live action stuff. But, um, but this is something really you can enjoy a lot more. But thank you so much, everyone. Uh, let me know what you thought about this. Tell me if you want to know more about my... Uh, my Ninja Turtle collection, my Ninja Turtle toys here. Maybe I'll do a review of those. Thanks everyone, it's been me, Go Carlo. Pizza time.